Edison. Let's go on to Tesla. I think Tesla is probably one of the more fascinating ones. He was very prolific. He, uh, f he was born in Serbia, then moved to the United States. He discovered alternating current multi-phase power systems. He developed the AC generator, the alternator, the AC motor. Uh, he even came up with wireless energy transfer, radio. was probably one of the first. Chandra Bose was one year ahead of Tesla on radio. Uh, Chandra Bose was uh, setting, in India, he would set off uh, gunpowder at a mile away using a microwave in 1870-something, which I found was fascinating. And then Tesla started up, you know, things about radio. Um, he worked with Thomas Edison. He was a friend of uh, Mark Twain. Um, and we can thank him for the motor. And right here, we're looking at alternating current. Now, what we're doing, when we look at a graph like this, it'd be like an oscilloscope graph. We're looking at up and down is a voltage. Across is time. And in AC, it swings positive, then negative, then positive, and negative, et cetera, et cetera. And the distance from one peak to the next peak, or one trough to the next trough, or any one given point on a repeating <coughs> waveform to that same equivalent point, again, is considered to be one cycle. And so if we have 60 cycle AC in the United States, that means 60 of these occur in one second. We talk about hertz. We say our cycles are 60 cycles in the United States. It's named after Heinrich Hertz, and it is cycles per second. 60 cycles per second is the same as 60 hertz. In Europe, their power is 50 hertz. Uh, this is one of Tesla's first drawings about an a, uh, AC motor, and also this is a symbol for an alternator. Any questions on this? Okay. Um, Lee DeForest, uh, he was invented, he invented the triode tube, and how do you remember that the triode tube was invented by Lee DeForest? There are three trees in the forest, and so, our three trees in the forest, and so Lee DeForest invented the triode tube. We talked about the tube earlier, how, oops, let me go back. In this tube, we have a filament heating it up. We have a plate, and in between the plate and the filament, we have a grid that modulates the flow of current from the filament cathode to the plate, and that allows us to have amplification. Um, here's a drawing, a diagram, of a simple DC power supply using a tube. This may be a little complicated, but I want to go over it for you. I'll try and make it as simple as possible. When this power supply, what happens is we have AC coming in, 60 cycle, 110 volt AC coming in. The output is some DC value at this point. What's happening is we, because this is a tube, we have to step up the voltage to a higher voltage to allow the tube to conduct. So what happens? We have less windings on the primary, more windings on the secondary, creating a high voltage going to the plate of this tube. We have a separate winding off the, on the same transformer to run the filament to heat it so that we can have conductivity. When electrons, when we have this happening, and let's say this goes positive here, electrons can flow this way. They flow from here to here. They flow from here to here. That flow is taking electrons away from this point, making it positive. When you subtract electrons from a point, it goes positive. And so this is rectifying or turning AC into DC. Somewhat complicated, but very interesting. You can see that in here. This capacitor filters it making it have less ripple. This is a half wave rectifier because it's only got one tube in it. To have full wave rectification, you have to have two tubes or four tubes. Does, it, does everyone understand this basically? Right here we have waveforms. This would be the waveform of coming in right here. It's an AC, see how it's 
not as high as this one's higher in amplitude. So this shows the oscilloscope waveform of a low amplitude AC, high amplitude AC. AC that's been converted into DC is still pulsating DC, but it's DC. Once it's filtered by the capacitor, it becomes pure DC. Okay, let me, any questions? The basic half wave power supply. The purpose of a power supply is to turn DC into AC and, may, and drop the voltage to where it can be used by a device that doesn't require a full 110 volts. Let's come in here and let's see, here's our plug in the wall. And we're coming out of that. We're going to a transformer. Iron core. And then we have a secondary. Less windings. Okay, this is 110 volts AC. And it's 60 CPS cycles per second. And we're stepping it down so this side's going to be 12 volts AC. That means here we're looking at a higher waveform. Over here we invert through transformers and the waveform is going to drop. So it's going to be smaller. This was from here to here. Uh, approximately 180 volts because we're doing peak to peak. This measurement is peak to peak. Right in here we're at about our RMS value and it's going to be 110 right here. So when that gets inverted we're going to actually have an RMS value not peak to peak value of around 12 volts AC. And so this is what's coming out of this point. I'm going to come here and I'm going to put a diode in. Electrons always flow into the, the arrow of a diode. And I'm going to come here and connect the other side of the transformer secondary to a ground. Now at this point we have AC here but after the diode, since the diode only allows electrons to flow one direction, what we have is only DC. It's pulsating DC, but it's just DC. The next step is you want to do some filtering. And so let's put in a capacitor. Usually in this case, let's say this is a 12 volt, this would be a, a thousand microfarad at maybe a 22 volt electrolytic capacitor. Uh, this would be the positive side and that would go to ground. And so now we filtered it and so if this is zero volts then this is 12 volts DC. If we want to get fancier we can actually put in a device that's called a regulator. It's a, si it's a uh, silicon device, solid state, and it is designed to keep the voltage at exactly 12 volts DC. And so between here and ground we could then power our transistor radio or whatever we wanted to. And that's a basic half-wave power supply.